the ants really did a number on this white oak tree and completely ate out the inside core. It, it died about a year ago. All the leaves fell off and otherwise the tree just looked fine. But um, yeah, they completely chewed out the hardwood on that. It's kind of funny. It actually seems to have been growing bark on the inside there. And I'm not sure what, I don't know if I've ever seen that before, but uh, the bark started growing on the inside of the tree trunk. So I'm assuming a lot of that was from ants because it was filled with ants and of course had those, uh, uh, those grubs in the bark that uh, will just continue to chew it away until the tree can't get any more nutrients. Uh, anyway, cut the tree down with the assistance of my dad and my brother. Fortunately, they were here to help. Unfortunately, the tree did not go the direction I wanted it to, but didn't hit anything critical. I uh, just landed over this way, and uh, which is the way that it was heavily leaning as we started to cut through. There was just not enough solid wood there to hold it. Um, and the reason it's shaped like that now is because my wife asked me to turn the stump into a chair. So that'll be a project for later. Finish cleaning that up and add a seat to it and try to fill in some of those gaps. Anyway, I thought that I would walk you through a little bit about the process of what I'm doing next. Once I got up about five feet and uh, removed that section of log that was right there, uh, the wood was actually really good. And it's, uh, it's white oak, so I decided that I'm going to saw this into uh, to lumber and uh, make some slabs out of it, make some two-by-fours and some one-by, whatever, whatever comes out of it. Uh, to do that, I'm using my, my Granberg mill and my uh, relatively new still MS661C chainsaw. This thing is an absolute beast. It's the, the biggest chainsaw that I've ever owned. This is a 91cc, and uh, it runs, ooh, I think it was around $1,300. So uh, definitely the most expensive chainsaw I've ever owned, and it was uh, not an easy purchase to make. But my last one, I think, was uh, around the 70cc, which at the time was the biggest chainsaw I'd ever owned. And uh, it, it just really was struggling going through larger logs with this Granberg mill. And that's what's on this side, that, uh, the guide that's on there. Now this, is, uh, this one is made by, uh, by Granberg, so it's called a Granberg mill. Uh, the more common name you'll hear is Alaskan sawmill. And I think that's because uh, a lot of people, uh, when they see me doing this, they're all asking, what are you doing? That was a terrible joke. I'm exhausted. It's hot out here. It's 90 degrees, and this is probably not the best day to the slab lumber. Um, anyway, this is the, the Granberg mill. It's got these two rails right here, and that is what rides along the top of the log while you're cutting. And uh, the first thing, oops, the first thing that you need to do is, is use uh, some kind of a guide on the top. Some people use a ladder. You can also buy a guide system, but you got to get the first straight cut. And I've already done that on this log here. You can see at the end that uh, I got my first cut made, and that's a nice straight line down the, the log. Otherwise, your lumber is just going to come off wavy if you, if you don't uh, get the first cut perfectly straight. So I made this thing out of, uh, out of OSB and some 2x4s in the middle, and I just screw that onto the log for that first cut. And uh, after that, those rails just ride right along the log, and I'll show that uh, at the end here. And... Uh, before, before I made that cut, after I cut the tree down, I sealed this with something called anchor seal, which is uh, just an end grain sealant, because uh, the, the end of this log is going to dry out a lot faster than the edge grain, and that's going to cause it to split and crack and check down the boards. So it'll just ruin your lumber if you don't seal the end grain first. And, uh, and I prefer to do that when it's still in a solid log form, so that uh, it's just easier to... to uh, get all the coverage on there without having to brush a bunch of little boards individually. So after I make that, I keep getting caught on my microphone cable. Uh, after I make that first cut, I just put this back on there to keep the log from drying too much. Uh, after I make that first cut, then I'll use the, the Granberg mill and the chainsaw just to make continual passes and uh, end up with, that's after several passes right there. And here are the ones that I've done so far. I got four beautiful two-inch thick slabs of white oak. The two in the middle are especially nice, although I expect... Oh, got my microphone caught again. Um, I expect I'm going to get some cracks on... I 
think it was this one, one of these, might have been this one, whichever one was the closest to the pith, the, the center of the tree, because this is quarter saw, and you know, all the growth rings are going that way, whereas these ones, the, uh, the growth rings are, are running this way, so it's going to warp a little bit differently, but uh, not a bad, not a bad harvest for something that the ants ate most of. So this is what I get to take away out of it for uh, probably about 14, 16 inch wide uh, white oak slabs with some some nice spalted sapwood. Now I do have to make sure that I cut off the bark because there are borers, uh, uh, some kind of uh, some kind of uh, boring larva that gets in there. Oh, maybe that's one right there. And those things will just continue to eat away. This is already kind of soft there, but uh, it's it's salvageable once it dries. They will continue to eat away just as the ants will, uh, as long as there's some moisture in that wood. So uh, by cutting off the bark, I'm gonna help get rid of some of that rot in there. I mean, this is not, it's not on there very well anyway. So uh, yeah, there's one of those buggers right there. So I wanna get rid of that food source for them and I'm gonna throw out all of that bark. Uh, any, anything rotten that comes off, I'm getting rid of. So that's about it. Uh, just wanted to show what I ended up with there. I mean, it's 2021 and look what lumber prices are this year. Uh, this is pretty much like having a, a printing press right in the backyard. I mean, I'm, I'm printing money right here. It's gonna take about two years for that to be really usable. Uh, you wanna give it about a year per inch of thickness to air drive it. Since I mentioned the drying piece, I should probably just show how that's done, uh, or at least how I do it. I have the, uh, one of these cheap Harbor Freight tents in my backyard and among other things, you know, storing, oh, I gotta get my hanging planters back up, you know, storing uh, stuff for the yard. I, uh, I also store lumber in here. And uh, this is some white oak that I, I cut up a couple years ago. It was from another tree that had been killed by ants, uh, a very large one. And most of it was rotten, but I got some pretty good wood out of there. And you can see some of the tunnels in the end there. But uh, I just, I stack it up on this platform. I made a platform for stacking wood and it was a, uh, not a very expensive investment, but a very smart investment, I think, because it's, uh, it's made it a lot easier to dry stuff. I just uh, you know, made a uh, two by four box out of some pressure treated two by fours, put a couple feet on the bottom, uh, and then some small pieces across the top, across the width, to, uh, just to keep the, the wood elevated. And that keeps it, so it's not sitting right on the ground where it's gonna absorb a lot of moisture. Um, and it also allows the air to flow an important part of it is that you got to put these uh, pieces of wood in here. These are called stickers. Uh, I mean, it's just the term that's used. Just uh, maybe three quarter of an inch or an inch to put some space between those boards. And that allows the air to blow through there and dry, dry the boards on both sides at the same time. Otherwise, you would end up with uh, just, uh, if you just stack them right on top of each other, they're never going to dry out properly. And all the boards in the middle are just going to stay wet and get moldy. So the stickers are very important, and it's good if you have some heavy stuff to put on top to um, weight the whole thing down so they stay flat while they're drying. And to get the right moisture content, it, like I said, it's gonna take about, uh, about a year per inch of thickness. So these have been here for about two years, and they're about two inches thick. And just to give you a rough idea, this is a moisture meter. I'm gonna set it for uh, hardwood. And this is the pinless type, so it doesn't have to poke in there. This is some white oak that I just cut recently. So I'll put the moisture meter on there and 35%, it's just soaking wet. And then if I go over to the stuff that's several years old, put the moisture meter on there, it's 14%. In some places I've seen it a little lower, 11, 12. So that's pretty good for outside work. Now, um, just air drying it like this is not going to kill all of the bugs. That's what kiln drying is for. And one of these days I might build a kiln. Uh, I intend to anyway. But uh, for now, this is good for some outdoor projects. I mean, white, white oak is great for outside stuff. I also have some chestnut oak here. Uh, I remember to label it with the, the, uh, the wood type in the year. I cut that earlier this year, and that is at 35% moisture content still. So it looks dry on the outside but um, it's, it's soaking wet on the inside. So don't let the, the surface fool you. you th these are gonna take about another two years before they dry completely. And for those, I got some 
some red oak-ish 4x4s back there that have probably been drying for four years. And I have another piece of oak over here. This has probably been drying for about four years also. That's down to 8%. And I don't think I would use this inside the house. I think there's some yeah, powder post beetle marks on here. Um, but, but you know, if I, if I were to put this in an oven and heat it up to 140 degrees, uh, again, I'm going to build a kiln. Eventually, just haven't yet. But you just want to make sure that you're not building anything with that kind of wood because it'll, it'll ruin your project as it dries and cracks. And I think that's all you need to know about air drying lumber. Well, that's it. A uh, fun way to spend a, a 90 degree day on the, the 5th of July. Got an extra day off this weekend, so that's cool. I hope everybody's having a great time and happy Independence Day to you. And, uh, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.